From fire in the building we were staying at, to some serious health issues with our rescued Filipino puppy Ozzy. We definitely imagined our first few days in Cebu City a bit differently. But before we talk about that, let's actually see what the oldest city in the Philippines has to offer. This may be the most beautiful thing we see in the Philippines. First, we are going to explore historical parts of the city. And we are going to start with San Pedro Fort, the oldest and the smallest fort in the Philippines. It was used as a headquarters by the Japanese in World War II and was later bombed by the American planes during the liberation of Cebu. <laughs> the place has a serene atmosphere compared to the rest of the city, also thanks to the great live band that made us want to sing as well. Check out there. Flower. Oh, I didn't get it the flower. You don't but you do. do, do. I really enjoy it here because I don't know the Cebu City is so grey but here it is so colourful and everywhere are flowers. I really enjoy that a bit. I don't know, green colour. It's very nice. The fort was actually constructed using corals created from the sea, which is absolutely mind-blowing. The coral stones were cut into squares and used to build the walls of the fort. The fort is also a great viewpoint at the neighboring part where we would like to spend some time, but we have to get to our next part, probably the most famous landmark in Cebu City. Magellan's Cross was planted by the Spanish conquistador Magellan in 16th century. We read several articles online saying that this is an original cross and only replica or that the original is actually inside this cross. If you know anything more about this, please comment down below. Right next door is beside his cat family. No, please don't entrance to Santo Nino Church. Established in 1565 by the Spanish conquistador Miguel López de la Gaspi, Santo Nino Church is the oldest Roman Catholic church in the Philippines. Unfortunately, Ivanka wasn't allowed with me because it was my fault. She, she even asked me, hey, should I wear something that covers my shoulders and knees? And I was like, no, probably not. Yeah, Even it's your yeah, fault. Yeah, it's my fault. But then I saw like many women there without their shoulders and knees covered, so who knows? After all the sightseeing, we worked out an appetite. Are you hungry? Yes. You know me, I'm always hungry. <laughs> Luckily, Cebu City is famous for its cuisine, especially lechon. We actually tried the four most famous lechon restaurants in Cebu, and if you're gonna watch till the end, we are going to tell you which one was our favorite. But there are other things to try here, like, for example, the famous noyong. Despite being inspired by Chinese dishes, noyong is unique to Cebu City. It resembles a spring roll and is filled with ground pork or minced chicken, finely chopped vegetables like bamboo shots and spices including a special 5 spice powder that gives its unique flavor. The filling is wrapped in lumpia wrappers and deep fried to a crispy golden perfection. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> I 
After we stuffed ourselves, we continued to our next stop, passing huge sculpture depicting important figures from Cebu's history. It does look interesting, but there is literally no information about it. And right next door, the Yap San Diego Ancestor House. that served as the residence of a prominent Chinese merchant was built during the late 17th century and is blend of Chinese and Spanish architectural influences. Today it offers a glimpse into the lives of wealthy families during the Spanish colonial period. Okay, this is honestly our favorite part of the whole city, probably. Wow! This, this is my favorite thing ever. Look, look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. This is my favorite ever. <laughs> no, because I love that. <laughs> I want this. I want that. This definitely reminds me of the ancestral house in the Hoi An Vietnam, but this is even more beautiful. Wow, this is this may be the most beautiful thing we see in the Philippines. <laughs> outside of the nature yeah, yeah definitely yeah. definitely we got to come here wow show us how you cook after the cooking show we started to get hungry again so we went to a lookout for our next filipino specialty <laughs> how was the house beautiful this was so nice i love the style and everything and the smell it was amazing, really. We have waited for this moment for months and now it's finally the day. Because today... It's Hello Hello Day! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are so excited. But it wouldn't be in our video if something didn't go wrong. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry, do you know where is uh, a Hello Hello here? Hello? Hello Hello. There should be sauce Hello Hello. Yes. Somewhere here. Yes. No? Yeah, no? Unfortunately, we weren't able to find the Hello, hello place that was on Google Maps. So yeah, Ivanka is probably going to kill me. Luckily, the famous Filipino hospitality strike again and we were approached by a young student named James that asked us if we need some help and walk with us to the nearest hello, hello place. James, if you're watching this, thank you. You literally saved my life. You are supposed to mix it. Hello, hello, that means mix, mix. Mix, mix, yeah. Unfortunately, at this point, our microphone stopped to work, but as you can see from our faces, it was delicious. As it started to get dark, we went back home to finally tell you what happened to us in our first few days in Cebu. Our main reason why we came to Cebu City, believe it or not, was the European Union. Because if you want to take your dog to any country in the European Union, you need to have a blood title test done, which has to be sent to the lab approved by the European Union. And yes, you've guessed it, there are absolutely no EU approved labs in the Philippines in country with high rabies risk and with millions of European tourists every year. But luckily you can get the blood test taken here and then send it to the lab approved by the European Union. And the only clinic that we found that can do this was in Cebu. So we came here hoping it will all go as smooth as possible. And then this happened. We suddenly heard the fire alarm and when we got out of the building we saw that the neighboring tower which was connected to ours was on fire. After a few hours while we were away the fire spread to our building as well. This truly show us the incredibly destructive power of fire. Luckily, no one was hurt as far as we know, but we had to leave our staff there and find a new place to stay overnight, which with a dog is not a really easy task. After a few days spent in an overpriced hotel, we finally found some decent apartment where we could base ourselves. But the worst part came when we actually get to the vet and told him what we needed and also show him a lamp that Ozzy had on his neck. 
he had it for approximately a month by that time and it first grew bigger and then it almost disappeared so we didn't pay much attention to it but then it grew bigger again so we showed it to the vet and they ran some tests we were there for almost five hours and the whole experience was really hard for Ozzy. Anyway, the doctor told us that it could be saliva in the cell, so basically saliva accumulation in a tissue due to leakage from salivary gland or it could be mammary tumor, so cancer in other words which is obviously the last words you want to hear from your vet. But either way, they recommended surgery to remove whatever it is as even the saliva could grow bigger and pressed on other organs and lead to difficulty with breathing and eating. And obviously, if it should be a tumor, you want that removed out of the body as soon as possible. So we decided to do the surgery, which with the examination and medication and everything, costed us over 50,000 pesos and we didn't even have the blood test done, which cost around 20,000 more. So yeah, more budget challenges coming. But the main thing is Ozzy, as you can see, is slowly getting better and ready for new adventures. In the meantime, we tried four best lechon restaurants in Cebu City to tell you which one we think is the best. Every restaurant was honestly great and had something to offer. Zubuchon, for example, had the most healthy version of lechon with great crispy skin. House of Lechon had a tasty sauce, delicious dinuguan. So really good. So, I love it. And great theme song. Of Lechon. Although you should come early as there are literally buses with hungry people coming to eat here every day. CNT had mouth-watering, crispy skin. And the meat itself was really tasty. Although, for some it may be too salty, but they can be on the first spot as unfortunately there was one huge problem when we tried to order our food there. Can you believe it? They have no rice. I can believe this happened to us in the Philippines. <laughs> and the winner for us, at least, had to be the Rico's lechon. We tried both spicy and regular lechon and they were both absolutely delicious. Oh my god, that was so good. The meat was so flavorful and juicy. And the skin was so crispy and the service was really great yeah. and friendly. Yeah, really. Really, really. But my favorite part was honestly the sisigar. Oh my god, yeah. It was so delicious. If you plan to come to Cebu, you need to watch this video next about our favorite island in the Philippines that's just a few hours away from Cebu City.